Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the FIFA 17 career mode. This is episode number 74 and I want to start off today's episode by saying a big thank you for all the support on this morning's episode. I really appreciate it very much. I asked for 2,000 likes for another episode later tonight. You guys smashed that. Appreciate it very, very much. So as promised, here is the second episode of season four with Borussia Dortmund as we continue our journey through the summer transfer window as we look to sign some new players. Now, of course, in this morning's episode as well, I did ask you guys for some transfer targets too, and I had so many comments from you guys, tons and tons of comments for lots of different players, but the main two players that featured in that comment section were these two guys right here, Diego Menendez and Henry the Hoover Davis. I had so many comments from you guys saying, please re-sign these guys, bring them with you to Germany, take them from the Riverside and bring them with you on your journey to Borussia Dortmund. So those are the two guys we target to start today's episode off as we look to bring two Middlesbrough legends, despite them being so young right now, to the Signal Aduna Park. I guess we'll have to wait and see what Middlesbrough say to our bids. But anyway, uh, continuing the theme of selling some Borussia Dortmund players as well and looking to replace some of the players here. We did uh, try and sell one of those players there, but keep past Lack here. And also a very interesting bid came in here too from Crystal Palace. Now, Alan Pardew putting a bid for the former Stoke goalkeeper Jack Butler, 86 overall, 26 years old he's valued at 34 million pounds and I asked Crystal Palace for 50 million pounds after they put in a less than valuation bid at 28 million pounds and keep your eye on that because this is very very interesting now anyway Middlesbrough came back to us regarding Diego Menendez they said they wanted 90.5 million pounds for Diego and I was like listen guys I know that I did so much for you and Diego of course won us the Champions League last year but can't we just strike up a deal here because I can't afford 90.5 million pounds and then they said to the who they weren't interested in the player we put in a swap deal, which is Gonzalo Castro, plus £30 million. And we had to offer them a new deal here of £34 million, which is his valuation. I was very frustrated with the Diego deal, though, but I still felt as though we may be able to convince Middlesbrough to let the Hoover go on cheaper than £90.5 million, that's for sure. But Palace came back to us regarding Butland, and they said they'd give us £31.875 million and £102. I don't think I've ever seen a club offer such a weird number, a weird figure like that before. So we asked for £40 million pounds and £2 pounds, and I thought we'd wait and see what Alan Pardew says to that deal because I'm not against selling Jack Butler because I've had him so many times before and I know I do like to try and sign uh, players I've never used before in career mode for uh, more variety and different players to use. But I've had Butland so many times before, so I'm not against selling him and trying to bring in a younger goalkeeper. And if we do that as well, if we do sell him, we will be able to bring in Diego and the Hoover. Because as things stand right now, with Borough rejecting our bids for Diego and Davis, I don't think we'll be able to sign them both as we don't have much money left over. However, we did get very, very fortunate with our second bid for the Hoover because they accepted a straight valuation bid of £34 million. And I've got to say, I don't I don't know who the chief executive is at Middlesbrough. I don't know who I was working with in my three years at Riverside Stadium, but whoever it is, he needs to get fired right now. They turned down £30 million plus Gonzalo Castro, yet they would accept £34 million and that's it. Like, what? What a stupid bid to accept. But Borough did uh, get more money out of me for Diego, though. That is true. So I guess they called this one right. £60 million for Diego. He's valued £11.5 million cheaper than that at £49.5 million. So it is a bit of an overspend for the Spanish. But I guess I don't mind doing that as we all know what Diego is capable of doing. But of course, despite that being the case, we are still going to be spending £94 million on those two players. That's a lot of money. I know they're great players, but that's an awful lot of money. And as you can see, our budget, we don't have that kind of money. But if we accept this Crystal Palace bid here of £31.875 uh, million, then we can afford them both. So in order to sign Davis and in order to sign Menendez, we need to sell Jack Butland. I don't want to do it, but we have to do it in order to sign those two players, but I thought if we do sell Jack, uh, sell Jack Butland, we'll need a new goalkeeper. I'm not going to play well in Rufa as my number one. I'll need a new shot stopper. And then I found this guy, Michael Muller, 83 overall, 21 years old, a new gen slash regen German playing for Queens Park Rangers. And he looks really good and has his contract up come the end of the year. So we offer QPR a bid. We'll wait and see what they say. And I'm not against bringing this guy in as our replacement for Jack Butland. But Hoover did sign for us though. So Henry 
Davis is back with me. He decides to come to Germany and join up with me here at Borussia Dortmund for £34 million. That was his valuation, although his valuation dropped after we signed him, which was a bit disappointing. I didn't like to see that. But either way, 19 years old, 85 overall. This guy was absolutely fantastic since the day we brought him in at Middlesbrough, gave him his debut, and of course he ended up captaining the side as well to a league and Champions League double. And his bro, Diego Menendez, is going to join as well. As soon as he saw that the Hoover had left, he thought, well, that's it, I'm going to. £60 million is the bid we pay for Menendez. It's a lot of money. It is an overspend, but I'm totally fine with that because we really needed to bring these two guys with me. They're both absolutely fantastic. His valuation dropped a little bit as well, but he's got great stats too. These guys are unbelievable players. I needed to re-sign them. You guys wanted me to re-sign them. And the 19 and 20-year-olds join up, and I'm delighted with that. And again, we had to sell Jack Butlin in order to bring them both in, but I was totally fine sacrificing the English goalkeeper because I know we could possibly get this guy in as his replacement, who despite being free ratings lower, would still be a really good shot stopper for us, as he does look like a really good new gen slash regen. Uh, and also a big came in for Gonzalo Castro as well. Uh, Zenit wanted him for £8.5 million. We asked for his valuation, which is £11 million. He's 32 years old, but still 80 overall. So Zenit said he's still good enough for our team, and Castro goes to the Russians for his valuation. So totally fine with that. And of course, we needed to sell one or two more players if we are to bring in Muller anyway, because because as things stand right now, we still couldn't afford a new number one. So right now, all we had was Well and Rufa as our goalkeeper as we were closing out the summer transfer window. So there wasn't long left, but thankfully, after that sale of Castro, after the season ticket uh, 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 money acquired being calculated there, we had a bit more money left over in our disposal. So I put in a bid for Muller of £20 million. That's £5.5 million under his valuation. We will wait and see what QPR say, but unfortunately, once again, they said no. So we had to put in yet another bid for Michael Muller and then I was beginning to panic because the summer transfer window was coming to its close. We were approaching deadline day and so far the only goalkeeper we had in our club was uh, was uh, Wellen Rufa and don't get me wrong he's 78 overall and only 23 years old so clearly a decent young shot stopper but we've had Butland and Berkey two amazing shot stoppers and now we've only just got the one who's a few ratings lower so we need to sign uh, Muller we need to get the deal wrapped up really and then as deadline day came through we had a bid here for former Sandrino as well who ends up going to Real Batiste for £7.5 million, which is totally fine with me. He could have gone to another club instead, but unfortunately, this uh, decided not to leave. But now he has gone to the Spanish side for £7.5 million. But QPR did finally accept our bid of £23 million, plus Subotic, who I put in the swap deal for Michael Muller. And as we offer him a contract here, he's 21 years old, 83 overall, looks like a fantastic shot stopper. And after selling Butland and Berkey, I thought I had totally messed up. But thankfully, I do manage to redeem myself on deadline day, pulling it out late on. Callum Clutch Wilson will be proud of these late, uh, last minute negotiations here. And it looks like we are going to sign Muller as our new shot stuffer. We're also going to sign this guy as well on a free agent. His name is Hubert. Uh, Hubert, oh god. Um, Hubert Gregsack? I mean, that's just terrible, isn't it? But anyway, this young Polish shot stopper, 20 years old, 68 overall, as a first choice goalkeeper, I think he'll be a good signing. But he's going to come in as is our new first choice goalkeeper as we sign Michael Muller for £23 million plus the ageing Subotic as well. So Subotic goes to Loftus Road. We bring Muller to Germany and I'm very, very excited for him as well. And i got to say, again, I really did redeem myself in this summer transfer window on deadline day because I almost totally messed it up. Starting off with Jack Butlin and Berkey, 84 and 86 overall. And then to sell them both and possibly end up with 78 overall rated goalkeeper and that's it, him on his own. That would have been disastrous. A huge, huge fail. But instead... I redeem myself, sign a goalkeeper of similar ability, not quite as good as both of them yet, but at 21 years old, you know for sure this kid's got potential, and he could be better than both of them in a few years to come. So excited for his development, and hopefully he'll turn out to be a great signing as well. And also Schmelzer is going to lead the club as well. Now Borussia Dortmund legend Marcel Schmelzer is going to go to Hanover for £5.5 million. He's 31 years old, 77 overall. The left back has been at Dortmund his entire career. He's captain in real 
life. But of course, when I join a new club, I tend to make my own captain and tend to transition the side to my liking. And Schmelzer, as Dortmund fans love him, he's obviously a really awesome player and a real fan's favourite. But in this club, he's a third choice left back right now behind Guerrero, my first choice, Durham, my second choice. He's third choice in the resis. And at 31 years old, he's only going to get worse. He's not going to get too many minutes. So I think it's best to let him go somewhere else where he will be first choice and can prolong his career elsewhere. It's only fair because at my club, he's just going to get wasted and sit in the resis and basically be left to rot. So Schmelz is going to go. I'm totally fine with that. And I would end transfer deadline day as well. So in the end then, in my first summer transfer window in charge of the Germans, we spend 156.5 million pounds on six new players. And i got to say, I'm pretty happy with the business as well. I wouldn't call this a 10 out of 10 summer transfer window. Absolutely not. It wasn't flawless by any means whatsoever. But to be honest, what you've got to remember is when we took over, this side is a good team, but they're in a little bit of a mess. I mean, they had so many players with one year left on their deal. So many big names as well. Marco Royce or Bamiang, uh, two main players. Gutzer as well, Mark Bartra. They needed someone to come in and steady the ship in the first summer transfer window. We did that. We sold some aging players. We sold some Deadwood players. And we also brought in Henry de Hoover Davis, a complete legend for the borough. Diego Menendez, the exact same. We brought in Wellen Rufa as a backup goalkeeper. We also signed Timo Werner, lest we forget, as a backup striker and long-term successor for Aubameyang. And we signed Muller as well, our new number one, and a free agent goalkeeper too, to sit in the resis who could be all right in the future. So I've got to say, the summer transfer window, you can let me know in the comment section down below how you thought I did in the summer transfer window. Tell me what you think in terms of the business out of 10. What would you score it? I would say 7 or 8 out of 10. I'd probably go with 7 out of 10 not to be biased as I did overspend on a few of the players but I think the Muller deal was absolutely fantastic to be honest the Werner deal wasn't too bad either neither was well in Rufus bid too we did overspend on a few players but I would definitely say it was a 7 or 8 out of 10 so I'll go 7 out of 10 in my business this summer but let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below how would you score my transfer business out of 10 as you look at a full list of negotiations through a very busy first summer transfer window in charge of Borussia Dortmund so now the transfer window window is closed after deadline day uh, ended there. The transfer window has slammed shut. We go into our first game with BVB as we're away from home to take on Red Bull Leipzig. So an interesting opening day for us then against one of the most hated clubs in German football as I look to get a winning start in my first game in charge of Borussia Dortmund. As you saw the formation, we are playing the 4-2-3-1. Mario Gutze is going to drop down and play in the defensive midfield position and play slightly deeper than he's normally used to. And Diego Menendez will start as the cam, supporting Aubameyang, playing just behind him. And Hoover will also make his debut, starting in the centre-back role alongside Mark Bartra as well. There's also a debut for our new number one, as Michael Muller will take his place in goal for Borussia Dortmund. So how will the new signings get on and how will we get on as a team as we look to make our mark early in the Bundesliga, lay out our intentions as we want to win this competition in my first season in charge. So come on, Borussia Dortmund. Let's have a winning start in today's episode and the first game of the season. Let's go, Dortmund. Dortmund. First chance to Red Bull Leipzig possibly. Kadira on the ball takes it round one and still Randy Kadira inside towards his man. And the shot comes in and Davis makes a great block. And then the second shot is saved by Muller. Our two new signs or two of our three new signs making a great piece of defending. Uh, great piece of defending. Showing their great piece of defending there. First Davis with the block and then Muller with a save. And it's still nil-nil. As Royce charges down the left-hand side. I've made him captain. And he's inside here. Marco Royce goes for goal. Good save. And Aubameyang tries to turn in the rebound and can't. And Berkey, our former goalkeeper, Keeper, who I sold to late, so he makes the save. So, a couple of chances early for both teams, still nil nil. Good tackle by Mario Gutze. Now Mark Bartra on the ball. I'll chip it inside towards Diego. Chests it, takes his time and goes for goal from range. And it's a good save by Berkey. Ginter looks for Dembele down the right-hand side. And a chance here if Dembele gets his skates on. He's so rapid. And Orban comes across. Dembele, though, beats him in a foot race down this right-hand side. Really good work from Dembele. Crosses to the centre. And there's Diego getting in. And it's a first Borussia Dortmund goal for Diego Menendez, who opens the scoring and puts us in front away against Leipzig. He scores on his debut 21 minutes in. And we have ourselves the first goal of the season. Excellent work from Dembele down the right-hand side. 
sideline. Nagru crossing to the middle. And there is Diego with a free header who nods it past the former Dortmund goalkeeper Berkey and into the bottom corner. He'll be starting in the cam roll in this team. I know that's where he plays his best football now. And he's already up and running in Dortmund. And last season at Middlesbrough, that was his best season so far in the series. No doubt about it. But this, I feel, is going to be his breakthrough year where he really becomes a super world-class player. Leipzig nil, Dortmund 1, the perfect star. Schmitz down the right-hand side, good little ball inside towards Paulson who takes his time and gets himself inside and fizzes across into the centre and Muller makes a really great save, well done. I'm really excited to see what Muller can do in this team and that was a great save there and another good one too from the following corner, another big save by the 6 foot 6 shot stopper. All our three new signings on the pitch right now are looking good early, still 1-0 and then the shot goes just wide from Forsberg. So second half underway here in Leipzig as we still lead by one and that was silly and oh my goodness Never ever ever do that. That is schoolboy stuff and Yusuf Paulson has just equalized for the hosts and that is just stupid I received the ball of Guerrero after the cross was deflected it plucked it out of the sky I passed it back inside my own area towards Mark Bartra and Yusuf Paulson latched onto it and put it past Muller to make it 1-1. I mean, there is no one to blame for that but myself. And we had such a great first half and you can see my manager avatar, he's saying, Docs, what are you doing? A silly, stupid error. And I've gifted Leipzig their equalising goal. Well, now Leipzig had an equalising goal. Only myself to blame for it, but I can't feel sorry for myself. Got to make sure I get myself back in front in this game. We played well in the first half, and I'm very annoyed that I've let Leipzig get back in this game. Still, Ginter down the right-hand side, receives that ball, and away he goes from Halstenberg here. Really good chance. There's men coming in. I'll slide it inside towards Vigo. He's got space to shoot, and it's a great save by Berkey, and Kadiri gets it clear. Come on! Diego rides a challenge and tries to play it through the gap towards Mario Gutta and finds him. Out wide is Guerrero, our left back. Aubameyang's in the centre. I'll try and find him. Instead, he'll find Royce. Another fine save. He's Gutter on the board, a fake shot. Rise a slide challenge, goes down this right hand side. Can he get himself inside? Yes, he can. Mario Gutta evades a couple of challenges and Berkey makes the save. But Aubameyang will tap in the rebound. And just on the stroke of the hour mark, we get ourselves back in front. And it's Aubameyang who pulls out the dab to celebrate us taking the lead again. Great work by Mario Gutter cutting in from the right. His shot was well saved by Berkey, but it fell kindly to the Gabon International. And Aubameyang tucks it in to the open goal for his first of the year. Come on. And there it is then. Final score away in Leipzig. Red Bull 1, Borussia Dortmund 2. And we win on the opening day of the season in my first game in charge of our new side. Diego with the first goal of the game on his debut inside the first 20 minutes. Leipzig got back on level terms for a silly error from me but Aubameyang got his first of the year to win us the game on the stroke of the hour mark 2-1 to Dortmund and a winning start for us I felt it was a deserved win for us as well 11 shots 8 on target and 56% possession too and man the match to Diego as well who scored on his debut the first goal of the season for us and it's a winning start for us in charge of Borussia Dortmund a great beginning to life at the Signal Iduna Park and that will end tonight's episode of the FIFA 17 career mode as well, guys. So a massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. A big thank you for all the support on this morning's episode. I appreciate it very, very much. And hopefully you enjoyed this one as well. If you did, then please do consider leaving a like as likes are, of course, very much appreciated and really help the channel grow as well. Much love to you and have a fantastic evening. And I'll see you for the next episode of career mode very soon.